praise the Lord that he's here. Amen. I wouldn't want to be where he isn't. Yes, sir. My little boy was walking along the road. He was about eight or nine years old. He was real happy and whistling and chucked out a bird nest and kept, kicked a rock along in front of him a little bit. And uh, the fellow sitting on the porch who lived next to the road was watching him. When he got up there where he was, he said, son, come here, come here. He said, why are you so happy? Well, he said, I've been to church and I learned about God, about the Lord Jesus. And he said, I'm happy. Amen. And the man reached in his pocket and pulled out a quarter. And he said, son, he said, uh, if you'll tell me where God is, I'll give you this quarter. Oh. And the little boy reached in his pocket and pulled out a dollar. And he said, I'll give you this dollar if you'll tell me where he ain't. Amen. Uh, Amen. 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 Yeah. Uh, and so remember that when you go home tonight, he lives at your house. Amen. Amen. You're a Christian. Amen. See, God's not here in this building. Mm -hmm. This building was built out of the same stuff that the bar down the road was built out sure. of. And uh, sure. so it's not a holy place. No. It's only holy when we're here. That's right. God's only here when we're here. Right. Now, we have set this aside and called it a sanctuary. Right. And it's given over to the preaching of the gospel. Amen. And that's what ought to be done here. Right. But I'm just saying, that doesn't make it a holy place. Right. Right. Uh, we are the church, yes, sir. Right. not this building. Right. Uh, down south, they used to say, uh, the church house. Mm -hmm. which was correct. Right. Today we just say there's a uh, Baptist church, the Charity Baptist Church. No, no. Uh, this is the building where Charity Baptist Church meets. Uh, and uh, we are the building that God lives in. Right. Uh, and so he's going to go home with you tonight. Uh, remember that, young person, when you get on that cell phone? Uh, remember that, Mom and right. Dad? When uh, you set aside all that time for other things, and right. he's sitting over here and saying, how about me? Yeah. Right. How about me? That's right. Uh, you know, and uh, so uh, be very careful to understand he's in the car with you. Yes, sir. Yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, you could fry me on the way home, but he'll hear what you say. That's uh, right. Uh, and right. you'll hear what I say, and he'll hear what each one says. Yes, sir. Uh, and he's writing all that down. Oh, yeah. And he'll read it back to us one of these days, and oh. he'll say, well, I didn't say that. Oh, he said, well, let me play your voice back. Oh, right. <laughs> and so you'll understand it is you saying it. That's right. And it was you that did it. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so, uh, you know, uh, it's like the example children have today is, I was in a home some well many years ago now, and uh, the, they had three little children playing on the floor in the living room, and the husband and I were talking, and uh, we were waiting for the lady to have supper. And uh, so the children were, were being a little noisy, but not, not overly so, I didn't think. And she came around the corner and said, Don't yell in this house! <laughs> That's about the way we live, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure they never will after a great example like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, it's like when they're born, you know, they're just little angels. They're just so cute, little angels. They get big enough to crawl and spill things and break things. And we say, you little devil, you better quit that. <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, don't take long to change your mind about sure. things. <laughs> uh, but God watches it all. That's right. Watches it all. Amen. You know, if he knows when a sparrow falls, right. imagine that. Yeah. Imagine that. The millions and millions right. of sparrows. Yeah. One of them is try, frying out across Kansas in one of those great uh, wheat fields at several thousand acres and has a little heart attack. And God says, another one fell. Oh, yeah. Wow. One winds up on the grill of a car 60 miles an hour, and God marches it down. Right? God marches it down. Yes. Uh, I, I was uh, talking to the Lord about that one day, and I said, well, how in the world can you tell when a sparrow falls? Such a great, great universe. Yeah. And he said, uh, Tom, my universe is so perfectly balanced 
that even a missing sparrow shows up. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. Isn't that something? Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, if we could balance our lives, uh, mm -hmm. well, I think maybe the greatest word I've ever learned in walking with God 65 years is balance. Mm -hmm. It's so easy to get overbalanced. Right? And that's what happens with couples. Yeah. The lady is at home, she's working hard. Uh, uh, you say, well, my wife doesn't stay home. Well, she will time I get through with this week. Uh, and, and you'll earn the living. Uh, and uh, like God said, amen? Amen, yeah. brother. <laughs> it's in your Bible, Titus chapter 2. Yeah. Let the women be what? Capers at home. Yeah. Oh, well, anyhow. Now, i uh, probably leaving earlier than Saturday. <laughs> but, but, you know, it's in the book. Amen. Yeah. Uh, and one guy, one of the businessmen in our church at home, he said, no, man, you keep preaching like you're preaching. You ain't going out of the place free. And I said, well, we want to speak on our I started out on those. I could go back to them. Uh, <laughs> Be like I was down in Winston Salem, North Carolina, preaching against cigarettes. Uh, and uh, uh, you know, uh, down there, everybody's in the tobacco business. They either roll them or smoke them or sell them, uh, one or the other. They're all involved in it. And this one guy, about six foot four, he walked up and he said, "Sir, you keep preaching like you're preaching. You don't get no love." For I said, I made sure I had enough money to leave for God. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. All right. Yeah. Don't threaten me with a love offering, okay? That will work for you. Amen. I'll work for God. Amen. Amen. And if preachers could get that strength, uh, and, and quit worrying about a check. Yeah. Right. And quit worrying about pleasing this. You know, I uh, counted up this one young fellow, he was candidating at this church. And, very big dog trotted in the church and laid down right in front of the communion table. And uh, they, this young young fellow, he, about, he, he just couldn't do that anymore. And so he stopped and ran the dog out of church and shut the door. And, and uh, when he got through, uh, one of the deacons said, son, that was my dog. Oh, he said, sir, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, no, he said, no, apologize. I wouldn't have had him hear that sermon for anything. Uh, and, uh, so, uh, that may be the way it is. Uh, like this cowboy, he came in church and he was wearing some old boots and Levi's and an old hat and sat down and listened to the message. Uh, and uh, then as he left, the pastor said, uh, Son, uh, you coming back? Well, he said, as planning on a preacher, maybe, maybe next, next Sunday. Uh, well, he said, why don't you ask God this week what you ought to wear here? And so he came in dressed exactly the same. Right. And uh, he said, I thought you were going to talk to God about what to wear here. Oh, he said, I did, Richard, I did. And he said, what did he say? He said, he didn't have any idea. He had never been here. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. So let's be sure God is here. Amen. Amen. He said, we're two or three. Right. are met together in my name. Yep. Is that why we're here? Yes, sir. In his name? <clears throat> Did it just say, well, I need to go to church today? Mm -hmm. Oh, I hope we don't get like that. Right, please. Uh, we ought to come here and because we want fellowship <laughs> with other Christians and we want to glorify God uh, with other people yep. uh, and lift up our voices together in song. Uh, and uh, praise him, praise him. Amen. Uh, you know, uh, let's try that, okay? Uh, let's see if both hands can go up like this, will you? Yeah, and watch it now, the roof didn't fall in. <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't know why Baptists don't want to lift their hands anymore. Uh, Sixteen times in your Bible that you say is the word of God, it says lift up holy hands. Right. Uh huh? Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, okay. That's good. Now, <laughs> I'm going to change my name to Ben so I can say amen, Ben. <laughs> All right, good. Well, I'm glad you're here, Ms. Williams, and I are glad to be here.
how we went out today and had uh, lunch with a preacher and some folks and, and uh, uh, Brother uh, Hyde uh, paid for our part of it and I appreciate that. Thank God for it. And uh, so I, I trust that you might get burdened and say, I'd like to take you out. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, we've got plenty of places to go. Okay. Uh, uh, but uh, I, I hope that uh, you will want to be with other Christians. Amen. Uh, and just fellowship together. Why don't you say, uh, you know, I know something about them. Well, they know something about you. Uh, you know, and it's like uh, either the husband or the wife will come into my office and want to talk about marriage and say, Richard, you just don't know what I married. And I said, look in the mirror, they didn't get a bargain either. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Right. Yeah. <laughs> Help, you know. Uh, Somehow or another, we've got the idea we're God's gift to right. the world. <laughs> yes. uh, you know, God got along before you came. Sure did. Yes. Got along before I came. Yes. He'll get along after I leave. That's right. Uh, you know? And uh, so yes, we just want to love Him, Amen. serve Him. Exalt him. I listen to his word. Amen. And obey it. It may cost you something to obey God. Uh, I gave up the greatest job I ever had. Uh, and uh, when I was 25 years old, I was on my way to the top of the Coca Cola bottling company and all of that. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, God said, Tom, I just want you to go be an evangelist. I don't have a Bible a school education. Well, I do. And they said, what college do you go to? And I said, M-O-H-S. Yeah. And they said, what's that? And I said, Midnight Oil and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Uh, you know, there is one available yeah. 24 hours a day. Right. And he will teach you the truth. That's right. Amen. Amen. The truth. No error right. in him. Uh, and uh, so uh, I, I hope that you'll uh, just learn to study the Word of God. Yes, amen. amen. Just ask God to help you in, uh, to, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ by the Holy Spirit. And I hope that you'll do that. I'm not going to say much about the table the rest of the week. Uh, the table is there. There's about $350 worth of things on it. And uh, we want you to buy it this week if you can at $150. Uh, and you'll have a library in your home second to none. Uh, but like, let, let me tell you this. You can have the best medicine in the world. If you leave it in the medicine cabinet, it won't do any good. Right. Right. Yep. You can buy that library back there. What you're doing, you're buying mine and my wife's life. This is what God has taught us right. in these years. And uh, I, I hope that you'll get them. Uh, there's some things there for your little children called Cowboy Tom, a little bit of the Old West. I make movies for children. Uh, I ride my horse and everything, and I show you how my horses obey me better than your kids obey you. Uh, and, of course, I do some things to my horses you don't do to your kids. So, uh, and uh, we're afraid anymore to make our kids mine. That's uh, right. And but God isn't His kids. I tell you. Woo! He'll yeah, take yeah. you. He'll take you to the woodshed. Yes, sir. Uh, but uh, I hope you'll go by the table and get the things. If, if you don't want all of it, uh, I don't understand why you don't. Uh, but get some of the things in your home that is going to be a blessing to you and a help to you. Not because it's what I preach. It's what the Bible says. Right. Uh, and uh, I hope that you'll uh, get it in in your home and use it for God's glory and for your good. Uh, and I hope that you'll do that. All right, good. Well, uh, let's stand together, please, just one more time. Get a good night, then he's And turn, turn to somebody and say, I like you. <laughs> Brother Grover, thank you, like you. Brother Mike, you like you. Okay. Now, I didn't ask you. I didn't ask you. What did you call me? Call me. Okay. So, all right. Now, I want you to find out somebody that you don't know their middle name. Brother Grover, what's your middle name? I don't. 
No, no, you're really good. Charles. Hey, what's your middle name? Back up. Michael. Michael? Michael? Yeah. My middle name is David. Oh, no. Yeah. Nice seeing you, buddy. Hmm? Nice seeing you, buddy. Nice to see you, too. I won't say nothing, Arthur. Right. Okay, that track right ought to be empty every Sunday. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
You should have them in your purse. You should have them in your pocket of your suit. You should have them uh, and put one in your uh, child's lunchbox or send it to school with them or uh, whatever. Uh, and we ought to be just distributing tracts. The communists capture the world with literature. Right. Uh, and uh, we need to just spread the gospel. You, yeah. you go down to the grocery store and, and have that uh, lady at the check stand or the man uh, and say, I'd like to have you read this. I shop here all the time. Uh, and uh, go back through the same check stand next week and say, did you read what I left you? And they say, yes. So how'd you like it? I didn't. Well, this is different. Try it. Uh, you know? Uh, and, uh, uh, sure. meet, meet, your, meet your mailman at the box. And say, you know, you've been bringing us letters for years, or for whatever, uh, and uh, I want you to know we appreciate that, but we have a letter from God, and uh, we want you to have a copy of the letter. Uh, we read it all the time, and I think you'll be blessed reading it. Uh, and give them a Bible. Uh, just constantly sowing the Word. Friend, you cannot read, for you have not sowed. That's right. Uh, big churches say to me all the time, now, friends, you know, uh, why aren't we seeing a lot of people saved here? I said, how much are you sowing? Right. And then you can't grow anything without water. That's right. Mm -hmm. And that's why Psalm 126 says, He that goeth forth weeping, bearing the precious seed, doubtless come back, bringing somebody with him. Yeah. Now think of this. Only 5%. Ever win anybody to Christ. Wow. Yeah, right. If every member, I don't know how many members you have, but if every member of this church won one soul a year, right? You'd have to build a new auditorium every two years. Right? That's right. That's right. Yep. Now, that's right, Brother Lynch, but what are you going to do about it? Am I? Mm -hmm. See? God wants you. To be a soul winner. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See, there are degrees in hell. Sure. Jesus said to Capernaum, He said, If I'd have done in Sodom and Gomorrah what I've done here in Capernaum, they would have repented in sackcloth and ashes. Yes. Therefore, it's going to be more tolerable for them in the day of judgment than it is for you. Right. There are degrees of suffering in hell. There's somebody that's never heard the name Jesus going to hell. And then there's other people that hear it on radio, hear it on television, can read it in the newspaper, and they've heard it a thousand times. Their judgment will be a thousand times worse. There's going to be degrees in heaven. I am convinced uh, from the scriptures that you will only enjoy heaven as much as you lived for him here. Amen. Amen. You surely don't think that a man who has served God, a woman who has served God, won't love Jesus more than the person that just played around about his Christianity. Right. No, they will. Sure. Daniel 12, verse 3. And they that turn many to righteousness shall shine as the stars forever. Right. It won't be hard to pick out the soul winners in heaven. They'll light up like a thousand watt bulb. Wow. You know, it, it really bothers me when people say, I tell you, preacher, just as long as I get there, God help yeah. us. Yes. Amen. What kind of attitude is that to a God who died and bled for you? Amen. Huh? That, that, you know, I love that flag. Amen. That, that red in there is not just symbolic. It's to show us the blood of American men and women who right. shed their blood Amen. that you and I might sit here in liberty tonight Amen. and have a meeting like we're Amen. having. Amen. Read the Bible like we have. Amen. My brother-in-law, is in that. his blood's in that flag. He died in a B-29. Uh, in the World War II, uh, one of my brothers that I just buried, uh, he was shot up on Porkchop Hill uh, in uh, Korea and so on. Uh, listen, let, let me tell you something. I don't know about you, but I love that flag. Yeah. 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 Uh, and be 
because it stands for my liberty. Yes. It, it was the shed blood of American boys and girls. Uh, after war, this country has averaged a war every 25 years yeah. since it's been a nation. Yeah. But all that blood of all those boys and girls doesn't compare with the innocency of God's Son Amen. that shed His blood. Amen. For he who knew no sin became our sin. Amen. You see, on the cross, when God looked down at the cross, he didn't see Christ. He saw me. He saw you. Jesus wearing our sin makes him look like us. Right. Now we wear his righteousness. When God looks at me tonight, he doesn't see me. He sees Christ. Amen. I'm wearing his righteousness. And it makes me accepted in the beloved. Right. And that's God's program. <coughs> and when I see that flag, and I see people desecrating it, and I see people oh. mocking it, Amen. and I see it sewn on the seat of somebody's pants, I want you to know my blood boils. Amen. Amen. I'm glad to be an American. Amen. And I'm thankful for that time. But I'm more thankful that I'm a Christian. Amen. I'm more thankful that my soul has been purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. And that I'm washed in that blood. And I'm forgiven of sin. And I'm on my way to heaven. Amen. And nothing can prevent that. That's right. and, and so tonight, uh, let's come back to where we appreciate what we have. Right. Let, let's come back to where we appreciate what God did for us in His Son. And, and give the Father great, great praise. Uh, Spurgeon even said, don't make too much of Jesus. You say, I don't like that. Well, let me tell you, He wouldn't have been here if the Father hadn't sent Him. God so loved right. that He sent his only begotten son. Right. Now I'm all for worshiping Jesus and I love him and I praise him and I exalt him in all of my preaching. But I want you to know we need to get back to exalting the Father sure. along yeah. with the Son. Amen. If you read Paul's writings and Peter's writings, right. they always say, and God the Father and my Lord Jesus Christ right. or his son Jesus Christ. Yeah. And over and over and over uh, it's in the scriptures and so we need to come back get your hard foot in our song book to go through and find the songs that talk about the Father. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and, and again, don't go over here and say, Brother William said we ought to do much about No, I didn't say that. I want to glorify Jesus Christ. Sure. I want to exalt Him. That's yes. what the Father wants done. Yes. Uh, but the Son wants the Father glorified. Yes. Uh, and uh, so it's a winning combination. Yes. And that's that balance I'm talking about in our lives. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know, you kill a church with missions. Mm -hmm. Just preach missions all the time. And stay on your people's back about missions all the time. You kill a church with yes, missions. Sir. Sure. You kill a church with giving. It's just give, 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 give. You know, I, I tell preachers, look, uh, you've only got a certain size of a congregation. Uh, and, you know, if you was a dairyman and you had 12 cows and you wanted more milk, let me suggest you buy more cows. Right. No, don't, right. keep, don't keep beating on old Bessie to give more milk. Sure. Uh, and so, you, you know, you got some needs. Go out and win some souls. Amen. Uh, and get them in here. Get them tithing and they can give. Uh, and uh, it'll take the pressure off of some that are already giving maybe twice, uh, you know, tithing and so forth. Uh, and uh, so uh, tonight, balance your life. Amen. Balance your life. Uh, you know, you can just, uh, somebody said, well, brother, if you just pray, 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 pray. I said, yeah, but I also preach, preach, preach. Mm -hmm. And I also go out and win souls. And I also read my Bible. You've got to have a balance right. in your life. We want our checkbook to balance, amen? amen. Uh, you know, and uh, we want our tires to balance. Right. You know, you can be going on the road, a little old weight that big, fall off of a tire, and you go, pop, 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 pop. Uh, you know, and, and that's the way our life is. And, and that's the way a husband is. He can come home, his wife been there all day laboring and everything, keeping the kids, uh, and uh, she spruced up a little, she knows he's going to be here pretty quick, and he comes in the door and says, what have you been doing all day anyway? Uh -oh. 
Yeah. You can slap him and I'll come help you. Okay? God, help. you got to keep a balance. Right. you got to keep a balance. Come in the door sweet. Come in the door thankful. Come in the door, uh, you know, praising God for your wife. Thanking God for your Amen. wife. And uh, thank God for the children. I know uh, that, they, you know, sometimes they have problems, and, but you never did, did you? Uh, you were always obeyed, right? Oh, yes. And, uh, oh, yeah. Uh -huh. yes. And you never lost a screwdriver, did you? No. Or a pair of flowers or a branch. <laughs> Uh, you know, what did you do that ranch, a little? Uh, yeah, you know. Yeah. I did the same thing you did a few years back. Sure. Uh, and and uh, keep a balance. Keep a balance in your life. The greatest diet in the world is a balanced diet. Yeah, yellow vegetables, green vegetables, some meat, this, that, and the other. Uh, and a balanced diet. God wants you to balance right. your life for Him. Yes. You, you need to pray. If you don't pray, you're out of balance. Right. If you don't read your Bible, you're out of balance. Amen. If you don't go so winning, you're out of balance. Amen. And if you don't give, you're out of balance. Amen. Uh, and uh, so he says here, if they humble themselves, I don't know what to take them with you, but why don't you get a hundred tracks uh, back there over the table or out of the track back and go down here and stand in front of the busiest bank in town and give out those hundred tracks. Not alone with you. Sure. Not alone with you. I, got you. I don't know if they take them. I don't know what it takes them with me. Mm -hmm. You know? I was on a train and I, I gave out tracks and uh, and uh, uh, I thought I was doing pretty good. Probably gave out 25, 30 tracks. And I was sitting there and here come a little one armed fella. The uh, arm cut off over here. He had this little stub right here. And I bet he had three or four hundred tracks stacked oh, in this. Wow area right here just gripping them with it and he was giving every person on that train a track mm. and God said okay hot dog <laughs> what you going to do about that right. I got up and I said give me half of those and you and I are going down through here together uh, yeah. uh, you know that's some of that business I was talking about your heart to deceive you. Yeah, yeah. You think, man, I'm really doing it. Sure. <laughs> then you look over here and uh, some, somebody else that doesn't have physical health or something, they're just blowing you out of the saddle. Right. Uh, in their love for God and serving Amen. God. And that's why Paul said, don't compare yourselves to one another. You'll destroy yourself. Right. You don't look at me or look at you or have somebody else. Uh, you just serve God. Live for God. Be what God wants you to be and do and have. And so we see here, he said, if you humble yourself and pray, and pray and right. seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin, their sin and will heal their land. God wants us to pray. Number one, God wants us to pray. Turn to Isaiah. Uh, and uh, chapter 56, the book of Isaiah, uh, and uh, chapter 56. And uh, the Bible says in Isaiah 56, and uh, it says, For ye shall go, uh, in uh, verse 7, even them, speaking of the unit, uh, even them will I bring to my holy mountain, and make them joyful in my house of... Huh? Prayer. Prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon mine altar, for mine house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. A house of prayer. A house of prayer. Uh, you know, to, to write over the door of most independent Baptist churches, the house of prayer would be asinine. Yes. Would be a joke. Yes. Uh, I was glad Pastor told me what he did that uh, you've been committing Wednesday night to prayer. Amen. I've been trying to get churches for years all over America. Pastor, don't preach on Wednesday night. It's just another sermon. Uh, and, and you're calling it prayer meeting. Right. Then let's make it a prayer meeting. Amen. Let's get on our knees, forget the dumb clock in the back, Amen. and pray till God says, get up, it's time to go home. Yeah. Uh, and uh, when we get back to that, we're going to see the amazing results of God's program. Yes, uh, and uh, we're going to see uh, what happens when we actually obey God about prayer. Mm -hmm. He said, my house be called a house of prayer. Mm -hmm. A house of prayer. And then Jesus, three times in the four Gospels, reiterated, my Father's house shall be called a house of prayer. 
That's what ate him up when he went into the temple and they were selling everything uh, in their sheep. Uh, the people had come 90 miles from over uh, in one of the other places in Israel uh, and uh, they didn't bring a sheep with them. So they bought them at the temple and uh, then they were changing money in there from this to that. And Jesus kicked the tables over, uh, you know. But the, the, the heart of God always thrills me. He took a whip, ran the oxen out, kicked over the tables, but it says he turned the doves loose. Mm. Amen. Turned the doves loose. God said, don't take the dam with the eggs. Mm. Don't take that mother bird that has her eggs. Right. Mm. He is so tender of heart. Yes, amen. You know, amen. He said, don't see the lamb in the mother's milk. Or the kids go, don't yeah, see yeah. it in the mother's mouth. That's too close to home. Mm -hmm. That'd be a vile thing to do. Yes. And you go to Israel today, and I've been there, uh, and you go down uh, to one of the places where they live and eat supper with them, and they will check and double check to make sure the butter on the table is more than two days away from the time that they were going to use it, knowing they might see the kid in the mother's milk. Uh, and if they're so careful, so careful. An Orthodox Jew will not say the words, I am. Right. He will not say, I am going to town, or I am going to pray, or I... They won't say it. That's right. God's name to them, is right. I am. Yeah. Amen. And that's what the Bible says. Yes. His name is I am. Amen. Uh, you know? Uh, <laughs> I, I tell these liberals, he didn't say, I, I, my name is I was. <laughs> he said, I is. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, he said, I, I am. I am. I am. Look, look in your New Testament. Oh, so I, yes. I am the bread of life. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. He just kept saying, Jesus did. I am. I am. I am. I am. Yeah. And we need to be careful in how we quote the scriptures. How we look at the scriptures. They ought to be precious to us. Amen. I, I'm not saying I'm somebody special. I'm not. But I don't lay anything on top of my Bible. Amen. You lay something on I'll remove it. Uh, this, I, and, and I understand. This is just a Bible that somebody printed. But it's the word of God. Amen. It's the word of the living God of heaven and earth. Amen. And we need to come back to a respect. When, when the first time I went to Romania, I took 10,000 Bibles and gave them out, or 3,000. The second time I went back, we took 30,000 Bibles to Romania. And I, I can't even tell you the thrill. My wife uh, was there on the second time. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, uh, as far as your eye could see, sitting on the curb were people 50, 60, 70 years old. They hadn't seen a Bible in 50 years. Wow. In, the, in the country of Romania, under communist regime. And you know, they were weeping. They were reading. They were kissing it. They were hugging it to their bosom. You know, does this book really mean very much right. to you, to right. me? How often do we pick it up? Amen. Amen. Do we sleep with one close to the bed? Mm -hmm. Do we have one lying in the living room? Young people say to me, said, uh, you know, uh, the young girl say, uh, you know, should I date this boy? I said, I don't really know, but if you'll get you a king-sized Bible about this big and lay it between you and him, time he crawls over Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, uh, he'll have a real problem, okay? Amen. Uh, no, uh, the Word of God is a protector. Amen. Uh, the Word of God is, uh, is a provider. Uh, and so tonight, uh, let me just say to you, God wants us to pray. Amen. He said, humble yourself, pray. He said, my house be called a house of prayer. And then the Lord Jesus in Luke 18, if you'll turn there, please. Luke in chapter 18 and uh, verse 1, the Savior said, And he spoke a parable unto them to this end, that men are always to pray. Men are always <coughs> to pray. Right. And not faint. I don't know what you draw from that scripture, but I draw this. That if I pray, I won't faint. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, 
men are fainting today yes. like flies dying on a hot afternoon. Right. 1,700 churches every month in America the pastor walks out. Mm -hmm. There's thousands of churches. I'm not saying they're all fundamental Bible free churches, sure. but there's thousands of churches right. in America tonight begging for a preacher that can't find one. Right. Mm -hmm. Missionary, average age of a missionary is 59 years old. We're just about out of the mission business. Right. Right. Young people, uh, the, the mission agents just say, Dr. Brent, uh, you know, why aren't more young people surrendering to go to the mission field? And I said, their parents don't want to. Right. right. I'm not trying to be cruel. Right. I'm just saying this. There was an hour when parents in this country got down before God and said, use my children. Yes. Use my children and don't draw any limits. Whether it's China, whether it's Cuba, whether it's South America, whether it's Suriname, or whether it's Bangladesh, use my children. Today we want them to live right down the street. Sure. So we can see the grandkids. Right, yeah. I don't... You know, I don't have anything against you loving your children or right. loving your grandkids, but how about loving your God? Right. Amen. Huh? Yeah. Uh, and, and, and I just say to you tonight that, that we, we need to come back to the place where Jesus said men ought always to pray and not pray. You said, preacher, how can we always pray? I've got to eat. I've got to sleep. I've got to work. Sure. He knew that. Yeah. That's not what he said. Men are always to pray. You know what he's saying to you is, when you start praying, don't quit. Right? You're going to pray about something, then lock in on it. <clears throat> and you pray, and you pray, and you pray, and you pray, till God does it. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just a few months ago now, uh, Ms. Williams and I got a text uh, from a, a preacher uh, down in uh, Tennessee. Bob Dustman. Bob uh, was off of a ranch in uh, South Dakota. I had a ranch in Colorado. Uh, and he came to, oh, when he came down there to go to college at Denver, he found out I, I was there, came out and introduced himself. He said, he said sir, uh, I, I'm a cowboy. I've been all my life on my dad's big ranch in South Dakota. He said, could, could I just come out here and kind of play cowboy on your ranch? And, uh, and he said, I, I just need that. And I said, sure. We became very close friends. And he then graduated from school, and went and got a church in Colorado. I preached for him there. Then he moved to a church in Arkansas, and I preached for him there. Finally, he wound up over uh, in, uh, oh, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, oh, honey, where is that? Knoxville. Knoxville, Tennessee. I'm sorry. Uh, there at the... Uh, Clarence Sexton's college, uh, and he became a teacher. Uh, Bob got cancer, and God allowed him to beat it. Uh, but because of that, uh, he had to go on dialysis. Uh, his kidneys failed. And I happened to be there when, when uh, they told Bob that day, and I was standing there with him, and, uh, and I said, Bob, I said, I'm going to pray for you, and Ms. Williams and I will pray for you until... God takes you off of dialysis. And we got a text from uh, Brother Bob Dustman oh, just uh, several months ago now. And he said, Preacher, I know y'all have prayed seven years for me to get off of dialysis. He said, I just want you to know at the writing of this text, he said, my granddaughter is flying home from China to give me a kidney. Boy, and she gave him a kidney, and they went down to the big hospital uh, there in Nashville, Tennessee, Vanderbilt. They performed the operation. They're both doing great. Uh, and uh, he's off of dialysis. And now, uh, Ms. Williams and I, uh, because of the philosophy that God has given me, uh, is we pray and thank God as long as we ask God. Uh, we prayed for nine years for a young couple in Australia to have a baby. And uh, just a year ago, uh, little Adam turned nine years old. Amen. And Ms. Williams and I finished up thanking God for nine years. 
Amen. for that little boy. That seems reasonable to me. Sure. Amen. That we thank God as long as we ask Him. Yeah, amen. Let's get honest. We are a thankless yes. people. Yes, amen. amen. Sure are. And one of the signs that God said will tell you that Jesus is coming soon is the world becomes unthankful. Yes, sir. Oh, amen. A nation becomes unthankful. <coughs> People become unthankful. Yeah. You know, even sometimes your own children won't write you back. Mm. Yes, you send them a Christmas present, you send them birthday present, and you'll wait forever for a thank you mm -hmm. from your own children. Uh, and, uh, you know, we, we have become a thankless people. That's right. mm -hmm. And husbands forget to thank wives. Yeah. And wives forget to thank husbands. Yeah. And parents forget to thank children. Yeah. And children forget to thank parents. Sure. And we're just a thankless Amen. people. Right. We ought to wear that out. Uh, you know, if, 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 I know a lot about Sesame Street, and I'm not going into that. <laughs> but if there was just one thing, that I don't like about it. I have a, uh, I had a, a lady who knew this lady that was very, very high in education in America. And she wrote Sesame Street and said, why do we never hear the words, thank you, please, yes ma'am, no ma'am? And they wrote back and said, we don't need that junk on our program. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I want you to know, that's not junk. No, that's Bible. Yes. That's Bible. Amen. And God's people have fallen into that very thing of becoming unthankful. That's right. And what the Lord Jesus is saying, when you start praying, don't quit. Amen. If you don't think that's true, look at verse 7. <coughs> and shall not God avenge his only way, which cry every once in a while? Yeah. Day and night. Huh? Day and night. Day and night. Unto him, though he bear long with them. One lady said to me, Why doesn't God answer all your prayers real quick? I said, If he did, you'd never learn to pray. Right. You'd never learn to pray. God is trying to get you to learn to pray. And it ought to be as automatic for a Christian to pray as it is to breathe. Right. It's like I tell people, uh, you, you know, about witnessing for Christ. Not witnessing for Christ. Mm. You, you, you know, uh, you turn on, you go, if you, if, when you go home tonight, now I'm going to let you out. Uh, when, when you <laughs> go home tonight and turn on the TV and you turn it over to a sports channel, I, I don't even have to guess. I promise you, they'll be talking about sports. Yeah. You turn to the weather channel, they won't talk about weather. Sure. You say, preacher, weather people ought to talk about weather. I don't know. I get, hey, man. Amen. Sports people all talk about sports. Amen. Yeah. Then you tell me tonight, what should God's people talk about? Amen. Hmm? It ought to be as automatic when you go to work tomorrow to talk about Christ as it is for them to talk about their sex escapades yes. and their drunk Amen. parties and all of this junk that goes on. Amen. It ought to be just that normal. We Amen. don't have to swallow our Adam apples till it's applesauce. Right. In, in, in order to get something out about God Amen. and about Jesus Christ uh, and in the, uh, in the uh, uh, vehicle where you join up together and go to the pool, what they call it, uh, you know, uh, just learn to talk about God. Right. Just learn to talk about God. Well, you say, well, preacher, uh, what, what, what if? No, no, what if? You, you quit playing defense and start playing offense Amen. once in a while, you know? Uh, and just you speak first, right? Just get your Bible out and start reading it. There you go. Yeah, that'll that'll raise some questions. Right, man. Uh, you know, and, and uh, just just live for God. Right. Is that so strange of a request uh, from one Christian to another? You know what the Bible says in Hebrews three uh, three thirteen: Exhort one another daily. Well, it is called today, lest you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Yeah. <laughs> exhort one another day. You know what that word exhort me? Sure enough, tell them. Right. Sure enough, bring them right face to face. Yeah. You know, in our churches, we don't walk over to one another and say, brother, you know, did you win anybody this week? Mm -hmm. You're right. Men are not walking over to other men and saying, how, how much did you read this week? Mm -hmm. tell, tell me something you got from the scriptures. There you go. 
Women are not going over to women and saying, I, I, I know you're busy and I know you have to cook a lot. I know that. But tell me, how much did you pray this week? Uh, what did you pray about? And did God answer? Mm -hmm. You know, right? The Bible says, exhort one another daily lest you be hardened up mm -hmm. yeah. through the deceitfulness of sin. Sin is deceitful. That's why the heart is deceitful. Right. Solomon said in Proverbs 4.23, Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Right. And so, do you have heart trouble tonight? Sure. Do you have heart trouble tonight? And something in your heart needs to get right with God? Right. Something needs to... I, I, I have a message called, My Heart is a Hotel. Mm. Which room does God live in? Right. David said, I want to serve God with a whole heart. Right. Does God live and in control of your heart? No. For out of the heart are the issues of life. Yeah. You tell me what you're thinking about today. And I'm so tired of people saying, my brain thinks your brain doesn't think anything. Mm. Right. All your brain is is a station that carries out what this thinks about. You'll never murder a man with your hands to you murdered him in your heart. That's right. You'll never reach over and pick up something and steal it out of a store till you've stolen it already in your heart. Good point. Amen. You won't lie with your mouth till you've lied in your heart. The Bible says out of the heart out of the heart. When we get a heart that's right, our brain will think right. Amen. Our brain carries out the orders of this thing and puts it out into all your body. Oh me. And shall not God avenge his own elect which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? Though God suffers you and suffers you to come to him in prayer? Is he just shoving those aside? No. The Bible says he takes your prayers and mixes it with the incense mm -hmm. that comes up before him. Right. And he smells those prayers and the sweetness of them. And oh, it commits him to answering your prayers. Right. It commits him to hearing you and listening to you yeah. and doing what you're asking. You say, preacher, do you get every prayer answered? No. Neither did Paul. Mm -hmm. Neither did Peter. No. I don't get every prayer answered. But that doesn't stop me right. from praying. Right. Because I get a whole lot of them answered. Mm -hmm. right. Wonderfully, preciously answered. You know, every prayer Every prayer will sooner or later be answered. Right, right. right. Even though it's another. He right. said to Paul, no, yeah. no, 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 I'm sorry to ask me anymore. Right. Three times Paul prayed. And he said, no, Paul, I'm not going to remove the thorn from your flesh. Yeah. But you will find my grace sufficient. Amen. And God will give you sufficient grace to bear up, to bear up, just like I'm 28 and a half years. My invalid wife, her brain destroyed, uh, and all of that. And, and, and you know, people said, "Put her home." I said, "You don't understand." I, t I told that little girl there that till death does part. Mm -hmm. Amen. James Dobson asked me when he ran it home, "Focus on the family mm -hmm. all over the world," and he said, uh, "You know, what if she never gets well, preaching?" I said, "Doctor Dobson, it's till death does part." Do you remember saying something similar to that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For good or bad? Yep. Rich or poor? No. Yeah. Hang on. Yeah. How many of you remember George Wallace running for president? Yes. Oh, well, come on, I'm not the only person that ought to remember that. <laughs> and Laura Lee Wallace yeah. walked out and left him sitting in a wheelchair when he got shot running for president of America. 
whether they like George Wallace or not is immaterial to me. I'm just saying, she said, that ain't what I married. Right. And she walked out. And I saw that time and time again, boy, eight and a half years. Husband walk out, wife walk out. Tell their children, that's not your mom. That's not what I married. I know, I'm sorry, it is what you married. Yep. And you lied at the wedding altar. That's right. Mm -hmm. right. And so I'm just saying to you tonight that when we come to prayer, just hang on. Mm -hmm. God's teaching you something. Amen. God's training you for something. Sure. God wants you to learn something. And so tonight, I hope, I hope that you understand prayer is number one with God. Amen. Amen. Until we have prayed, <coughs> we have done nothing. That's right. Until we have prayed. We have done nothing. Amen. Now, let me quickly close tonight. And uh, please stay with me on this, okay? Don't turn me off. Turn me out off. We don't pray to the Holy Spirit. You hear people everywhere praying to the Spirit. Sure. There's nowhere where Jesus Christ said, pray to the Holy Spirit. Okay? Right. In John 16, verse 23, Jesus said, No longer pray to me. Right. right. Henceforth, ask me nothing. Right. Henceforth, ask me nothing. And yet, all over fundamentalism, people pray to Jesus. Mm. Right. Yeah. And I heard one thing just a few months ago. I heard one of the leading preachers in fundamentalism and he led in prayer and he prayed to Jesus in Jesus' name. I don't know what could be more confusing than that. Right. To pray to Jesus in Jesus' name. Right. Yeah. And that's what people do all over this country. Sure. Yeah. And they'll say it like this uh, and they'll close the prayer in, in your name. Whose name? Yeah. Right. Huh? Is it God the Father's name? Is it Jesus' name? Yeah, Did you just get to praying to Jesus and now you're going to use his name to close it? Right. That's got to be confusing. Sure. No, he says you pray to the Father. Amen. When the apostles came and said, Lord, teach us to pray. This is what he said in Luke chapter 11. He said, when you pray, say our Father. That's right. That is not so hard to learn. Yeah. To say those words, yeah. our Father. Amen. But listen to people pray. <laughs> listen to people pray. Now, I'm not trying to be critical. Sure. I'm trying to help you Amen. to have a life of prayer. Amen. Now, wife and I don't want you to have a time of prayer. We want you to have a life of Amen. prayer. Amen. That's what God wants you to have. Uh, <laughs> come up here. Uh, what is your name? Jesse, that's right. But not Shame. Jesse James, right? Jesse, <laughs> Jesse uh, 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 I want you to just stand right there. Now, Jesse, you and I are going downtown, right after church, okay? Uh -oh. And when we get down to town, Jesse, we're going to get out of the car, Jesse, and we're going to go in the store, Jesse, and we're going to buy this, Jesse, and after we pay for it, Jesse, we're going to get back in the car, Jesse, and we're going to drive out to church, Jesse, and then we're going to get out and get back in there before everybody goes home, Jesse. Okay, thank you, Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> now, if I did that, you would think I was nuts. Sure. But listen to people. Right. Amen. Lord, I want you to help us, Lord, and Lord, would you just work, Lord, and Lord, bless in the service, Lord, and Lord, and Lord, and Lord, and Lord, and Lord. Right. Lord. Could, could I tell you tonight, with absolute authority, God understands pronouns? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what Lord becomes and what God becomes? It becomes a filler. Amen. You don't know what to say. That's right. So you just say, Lord, 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 Lord. Lord. Right. No. Look, yep. Jesus said, when you pray, Say, our Father. Yes. If you'll check his prayer out in Luke 11, if you'll check it out again in Matthew 6, 
you will find out that he said Father one time and never said it again. Right? Amen. I'm just getting you to try sure. to get you to, to really think Amen. about what you're praying. Amen. And, 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 and come to him in worship. Come right. to him in adoration and we'll get off on that another night, okay? Amen. But God Amen. help. Yes. God help tonight. We need to learn to pray. Amen. The Amen. Bible way. Yes. It's like the song we sing that sang this morning, to God be the glory. Amen. You come to him through his son. Right. That's the only way to get there, folks. Amen. You can't get there and get saved without coming through Christ. He said in Hebrews 7, 25, he said, I can save to the uttermost all that come unto God by me. That's right. By me. Yeah. Seeing that I ever lived to make intercession. Right. And then he said, you can't get to the Father without coming through me. Amen. This city is filled with churches, and in most of those churches, they would tell you tonight, I believe in God, but I don't believe in Jesus. Yeah. I said, that's an impossibility. Right. You right. can't believe in God till you believe in his son, right. who, re who uh, is the one who represents him. And let, let me just say to you tonight that until we come back to adoring Jesus Christ, we're not going to get very close to the heart of the Father. Amen. 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 That's right. Amen. Amen. Well, our Father, thank you tonight for your word. Thank you for all the things that it teaches us. All the things that it speaks to our heart about. Oh, precious Father, tonight. Please help us to get back to the Bible. Not only to pray, but how to pray. And to please you. To recognize your authority in how to pray as well as to pray. Please, our Father tonight, get a hold of our hearts. Sister, I don't think we'll have any music tonight, okay? Any song or any music. Let's stand together. All I ask you tonight, same thing I ask you this morning, if God spoke to you about this thing of prayer, just come on as people have already come, a number of people at the altar, come on, right now tonight. You say, preach, I was down there this morning. Could I tell you that two trips won't hurt you? Amen. Two trips won't hurt you. Come on tonight, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. God bless you, that's right. Come on. Come on. You know, every time Israel sinned, they had to pick up their lamb and go to the tabernacle. Mm. Come on, right now. Let's humble ourselves before our God tonight. And admit, Lord, I've been slack about prayer. I've been slack about thank you. I've been slack about how to pray and what to pray. And, and uh, coming before you in adoration and exaltation. God bless you. God bless you. Come right on. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Come on tonight. Right now. Just get down here and humble yourself before God. God bless you. That's wonderful. If you'll, if you'll start right now, we'll wait on you. Come on. Come on, Dad. Come on, Dad. Lead your family. Lead your family. Come on. Lead your wife. Come on right now tonight. Right now tonight. God bless you, sir. That's right. Come right on. Right on tonight. Right on tonight. With our heads bowed, our hearts bent, and our will surrendered unto our God. Tonight, like Jesus did, not my will, but thine. I'm going to ask Pastor, you're his people. As you remain at the altar right now, I'm going to ask Pastor to pray for all of us. Father, it amazes me how wonderful and powerful your word is. And Lord, we've uh, been drawn today to be closer to you. You've given us the elements by where we can. Lord, you've given us a mind, a soul, a body to be, O oh Lord, to lay it at your feet. We thank you so much that we could come. Mm 
Yes. Oh, God. Lord, now there are sins in our life that Father is still holding us back. Yes. I know, Lord, as a man in the flesh, how difficult it is to let go of those things. Yes. But Lord, we've been praying this past week that there be a, a desire to let it go for a week at least to see what happens. Oh, okay. Just a week. And already we know that the Spirit of God is working. We know that uh, yeah. hearts are getting right, minds are trying to uh, uh, remove all the obstacles that are laid before us to draw us away from you. Yeah. Thank you for the preaching. So simple, but yet so powerful. Yeah. Lord, so uh, can't thank you enough. Help us to think about tomorrow night. Yeah. It's going to be difficult. The devil is going to get in our way, discourage us, and make us feel like there's no need. But if my people, which are called by my name, Lord, that's humbling. So help us to be able to humble, us, to humble ourselves. Lord, thank you for tonight. Bring us again tomorrow night. We'll thank you for it. In our Lord and Savior's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 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 Amen.